afternoon, folks. Um, yeah, as Jim has just said there, we brought in this project five weeks ahead of schedule. It was um, opened, officially opened by the Mayor of Galway and Minister Eamon Ryan on the 26th of May, that's two weeks ago, yesterday. So I'm going to show you a video of about six minutes uh, and then I'm going to do a slideshow and then I'm going to finish off with another video which has a time lapse in it which explains uh, or sh shows how the, the construction happened. Um, and just be maybe before I start then I, we, I have a number of photo montages around the room there. One is an, over, an aerial photograph over there beside Jim and um, there's a list of different projects that we're working on. One of which, uh, obviously, is the, it's listed as a proposed uh, pedestrian and cycle uh, bridge, but now that has to change to the actual. Uh, there's another one, which another project, which is um, the active travel Eglinton Canal, which we, the previous speakers have spoken about. Um, so then, down along, if you you can follow the trail of the of the construction process all the way around from from uh, clockwise, all the way around the room. Uh, and you come around here to the end. The last one here is um, a, a night shot of the of the new bridge. Uh, and down in the corner there, uh, there's been uh, previous speakers have spoken about the Eglinton Canal. Uh, so that map is uh, an extract from Morris Semple's book. And the, um, the 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 map or the drawing is from 1846. It's an interesting year because. It's the year after the university opened, 1845, and the, the, the drawing is of the proposed Eglinton Canal, Eglinton Canal in 1846. And as the previous, mention, the previous speaker, speaker mentioned there, it was opened in 1852, only six years later. So there's a huge amount of industry, a huge amount of work done during that period in six years. So. We, we, we think we're good bringing in this one five weeks ahead of schedule, but they, they did five bridges, I think, and a canal in six years. Um, so, and also in 1820, there, was, there were somewhere in the region about 26 uh, different mills in Galway. And they're all detailed on that map there, including Persis Distillery. Um, and, and indeed, this new bridge is, is quite unique in that it crosses three watercourses, one of which is the Persis Distillery River, then it crosses the main river, which is reputed to be the fastest flowing city river in Europe, and then Friars River, or Aon Nebradon. Um, so maybe I'll just, um, yeah, so the, the, the 26th of May, a couple of weeks ago, and the previous important milestone was indeed the 12th of December. Now in order to, uh, arrive at the 12th of December with, uh, and in order to bring this project uh, and to bring it to fruition, we had to bring, we had to bring uh, and install the main span of the bridge, um, which is 50 meters long, it's eight and a half meters wide, it's 163 ton weight, uh, and a domestic car is about one ton, so 163 cars, you can see it there, the, the main span of the bridge. It's got a central spine beam, and I'll talk later about the uh, about the form and character of it. Um, but in order to lift in that bridge of 163 ton, you had to have to, you had to have a, a very very big crane, which was 650 ton, so 650 cars. Um, now, again, there was temporary works in order to ensure that that didn't fall into the river, etc. So that would have been a disaster, obviously. But um, anyway, the morning of the 12th of December. Uh, just before Christmas, uh, we started to lift it and bring it into, into position and lift it. We started lifting it about 10 to 7 and brought it around here and by 20 past 8 I was walking on it. Uh, so anyway, we'll have a look at the, the video. It's about six minutes long. Uh, we'll see if we can get it. <laughs> spine being there. And this is the SPMT, the self-propelled mobile transporter. I had to sit on that. 16 axles, so it was 10 ton per axle.
This was done on the Sunday, this, this movement here now all, all happened on Sunday, the 11th of December. So you moved it into position slowly but surely. It took a number of hours. So, yeah, all the various different features of this bridge, and we'll talk, I'll talk in a few minutes about the shape of it, and indeed the architect who had the vision for it. It's in the shape of a salmon uh, to reflect the, um, I suppose, the cultural heritage of the place. Um, but this, this shot was taken in just a number of weeks ago, and uh, all of this area here is now finished. It's uh, uh, finished with flamed Kilkenny limestone. Uh, the walls here are, um, of cut cut limestone, um, and the uh, on, on both sides they're they're uh, it's faced with cut limestone, and that the pattern of it reflects uh, nicely on the, uh, the, the 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 pattern on the on the cathedral itself, which was finished in 1965. Uh, there's some other little features here, such as the rounded section here, which reflects this rounded section here. And this section, that's Purse's Distillery River. Uh, interestingly, the river, when you follow it up, it goes, uh, crosses the Eglinton Canal over here and crosses under, underneath the Eglinton Canal uh, in a in, in siphon. Uh, and that's just to the rear of the, the College Bar there. Um, so, but this, this, um, this rounded section here, we, it was in, in very poor order, just to mention it. Uh, we dismantled it de-regged it, reconstructed it, and repointed it. Uh, and interestingly, you will see that if you when, you, when you walk over there the next day, you, you get a chance, you'll see that this, this, this arch here is three-dimensional. These, are, these, are, these arches here are two-dimensional. This arch here is, 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 is comes around here. It's a, a brilliant workmanship that was done in 1820. Um, so obviously, the, the distilleries, the, the, the distillery river was there in advance of that. Um, so this is the middle island, the main river, and then the middle island over on the east side, Friars River, uh, and again in the shape of a salmon. Um, there's an oculus here and an oculus here to view down into the river. So you can see the, the fish below, uh, it's a glass oculus. Um, just the need for the scheme, just um, I suppose just got into detail. I won't. I won't stay too long on this. The need for the scheme, the need for the segregation of pedestrians from buses on the Samuel Bridge uh, and traffic uh, through the provision of a new parallel bridge adjacent to the existing, existing structure, remove the current conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians, facilitate development of public transport corridor of the existing bridge, enhance sustainability, healthy links between both sides of the, uh, the river, linking hospital, the university, community, and the city centre. Create focal point for locals and tourists by offering new views of the river. When we opened it almost immediately, uh, people took to it, sat on the benches on either side of it, uh, start to sit on the main spine beam itself. And you, I don't know whether anybody picked up the Irish Times the following day, which was the uh, the twenty seventh. You could see children sitting on the on the spine beam itself and playing and enjoying themselves. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bridge for for all. Um, uh, young and old, and to, to walk on and to cycle. And so it's improving the pedestrian and cycle linkages between, and, ma and making a statement also to capture the significance of the area and celebrate the, uh, the hit city's history. And this just chats here about the, the various different steps, uh, how, to, how the milestones were met. So the objective included the annual service delivery plan and the funding provision for the European Regional Development Fund through the Northwest Region Assembly and the National Transport Authority, the were 50-50. Tender for appointment for the Bridge Engineering, Environmental and Management Architects. 
Arab appointed as lead consultants in January 2019, along with Sean Harrington, architects, appointed lead architect, public consultation virtual room. So this was in the middle of, I suppose, quarter one 2020, if you remember. Uh, it was the commencement of the lockdown. So we had, well, we had to reinvent ourselves. And what we did was we introduced a, a virtual room, the first of its kind in the country. Uh, so we advertised it uh, publicly to uh, let people know what we were doing. We had a, a, a virtual flight through of the, of the bridge as well on it. Uh, and we got um, something like 2,000 hits in the first few days. Uh, and we got, I think it was 47 submissions. Um, so then that was the non-statutory public consultation and to, I suppose, to, to discuss it with the public. Then the submission of the planning consent application to a board planola was made on the 27th of November, 2020, along with the CPO. And then Atkins then were appointed for detailed design in quarter one of 2021. Now this was all during uh, the COVID lockdown as well. So then tender for issue for construction. So what we did was we, uh, we, we in advance of the decision from a board planola, we, 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 we continued with the detailed design and got up a lot of, uh, I suppose, got, a, got ahead, of, ahead of the program. Uh, tender issue then for construction was 3rd of December 2021 with the return date 28th of January and then John Civil Engineering were appointed on the 11th of March last year and commenced on site on the 25th of March 2022 and the contract duration is 15 months and scheduled to be completed at the end of June, end of this month. We still haven't reached the end of the uh, contract period. So where did the design come from? Uh, we looked at a variety of different other bridges, looked at this is the Mary Ellen's Bridge in Cork, which is similar to it, it's got a central spine beam, uh, as you can see. It is quite unique, there are three water courses that we had to cross. Again, this is the Mary Ellen's, and some of the detail here of the, uh, the handrail, what we did was with the handrail, we'll look at it later on. This is kind of a, an elbow type shape, but what we, did it, we did it in a rounded shape. And we'll talk about that in a while. This is the Millennium Bridge in Dublin. Again, a pedestrian and cycle bridge and lighting. And of course, the lighting, which you can see here on the, uh, on the wall here, on the last uh, photograph, shows the lighting. There's a lot of work put into the lighting. And the, and the lighting is in the handrails uh, on the bridge. And there's also uplighters to uplight the, uh, the central beam. The place and setting. Uh, this was in advance of anything more, uh, being done on site. Uh, again, the place and setting. So this is um, uh, Persons Distillery River here, where the level of the water is higher than the river itself. And then this is Friars River. So these are some of the challenges we were facing. Again, the Friars River has a water at a higher level than the main river. So the three different levels of, of water, which were, was posed a challenge for us. So the key constraints, existing pedestrian and cycle desire lines, potential impact on La Corab SSC, the flora, the fauna, and the rivers and the surrounds. And indeed, the receiving environment was very, very, um, very sensitive. Uh, the huge amount of history associated with, it, with the, the cathedral, the convent, uh, the, the protective structure, which is indeed the, um, uh, the Samuel Bridge. And then the form of the bridge was carefully chosen to reflect the heritage, as I mentioned earlier, and the potential impacts on habitats, etc., the bash, the otters, etc., potential impact on the river amenity, um, usage and the seating, archaeological features within the embankments and the riverbed, and the constructability due to the limited access. So it's a very, very constrained site. And in order to fit even the exercise of which we did on the 12th of December, in order to do that, it was really, really constrained, and there were a huge amount of logistics in order that we arrived at that date with a crane of that size and, and the, the bridge itself ready to be put in place. So the, the, the crane itself had to be ordered and booked six or seven months in advance. So, And the crane has started arriving, I suppose, a week or 10 days in advance. It took uh, 20, uh, 20 loads, 20 truck loads in order to bring it to site and then it had to be assembled. Um, this here is all the various different forms of the bridges that we looked at. Um, so we chose this, this one here at the top left um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the central spine beam in it. 
this um, again we took some ideas from the living bridge in the University of Limerick um, slim line bridge the handrails uh, the height of the handrails uh, how you can see through it as well so one, one of the reasons we had chosen the particular handrails as well is, and, and the, the wires in it is in order that you, the view from the south wasn't interrupted of the existing bridge. So the key, key challenge in se selecting the optimum location for the bridge is finding the right balance between capturing the desire line of the pedestrians crossing line for the pedestrians and protecting the views of the existing Samoa Bridge from all southern approaches. So this was the form of the bridge that was uh, proposed by Sean Harrington Architects. Again, Sean Harrington has built and designed quite a number of uh, bridges around the country. It's an important route for the salmon, opportunity for viewing places to see the fish and the river scapes. And as mentioned earlier, there's, there's two oculus, an oculus on the, the west and, the, and on the east approaches. The, the other part about it, which I mentioned earlier, is that the, uniquely it crosses three water courses. Uh, and then the other part of what we wanted to do was provide a generous public space to take in the views. This was the emerging preferred option. And one of the features, again, the central spine beam widening out in the middle, the circular area here, quite constrained here because of the middle bank. And again, this was constrained as well. Uh, the oculus here and the oculus on this side as well. And then one of the features of the bridge, which I don't know whether people spotted it or not, but the main spine beam line, lines up with the central tower of the, uh, of the convent. So some of the next steps then, construct piles, west piles and foundation install temporary bridges. You'll see those in the photographs in a while. West middle bank uh, piles, anchors and foundations, piers, holding down bolts, 48 bolts on each side. And we'll look at those, we'll look at the photographs of those later. Traffic management was a challenge. We had to do it in three different phases. Uh, people might remember that we closed uh, Newtown Smith. We also closed um, Goyle Road East for a period and then opened them back up incrementally as well. Stall the beams on Persis Distillery River. Construct middle uh, pier at Friars River Canal embankments, complete anchors. Stall beams on Friars River took possession of a portion of the car park on the 10th of October. Delivery of the main span from Thompson's Yard in Carlo on the 24th of October 2022. Assembly of main span and cathedral, main span and facade on the 12th of December. And complete finishings then was paving, seating, lighting, landscaping by June 2023. But we're just ahead of the game there. Um, this is a photograph which I've taken and I've on the wall down below there. It is from uh, in or about. 1945-1950 and it says the Salmon Weir Bridge is here, uh, Persis Distillery River, the Queen's Pass which was mentioned earlier, O'Brien's Bridge, uh, Wolf Thorn Bridge, the Clada Basin here and the, and the Clada Houses were somewhat under construction I think at the time so that lends me to the, it must have been after 1935 but before the commencement of the construction of the cathedral because you have the, the walls of the of the um, of the jail here, uh, still in place. So a few weeks ago, we took the exact same photograph from a, uh, from a drone, and that's it now with the cathedral in place and our, our new bridge here. Uh, and that's the Queen's Pass, etc. in O'Brien's. This is a photograph just in advance of construction, again showing the, the convent tower, the east bank, the west bank, and the wall here. Photograph during construction, you can see the this uh, west bridge here being constructed. And this, uh, how did we, I suppose the challenge was this water level here was higher than this. So we installed a bund, a water filled bund, to prevent the water from uh, uh, coming into the excavation. So they had to excavate here. So that's the west middle bank under construction. That's the foundation. Again, some of these walls, we had to dismantle them, carefully dismantle them, and then we reconstructed them. You'll see the reconstruction later on. This here is um, a temporary bridge, uh, which was installed as well. Another view of it, Trapund here, temporary bridge there, temporary bridge here, and then this under construction here. Another photo. 
yeah, beams being installed adjacent to the convent here. And we had, you see we had to deck out this area here. There's a photograph from the factory. They, they, they did up a sample for us. That's the central spine beam here and the cantilevered uh, walkway here. Uh, this is the handrails. Rather than doing it with an elbow, we did it curved. Again, another photograph from the factory of the, of the beam being manufactured. This is after delivery of the main beam, the main spine beam, and indeed the cantilever is being installed here. And that was the car park, and there were two service cranes here. This is just an advance of moving. Again, another area shot. Um, this, is the, this is the crane, 650 ton, putting on one of the tracks there, so you can imagine the size of it. Another shot of the crane. That's it there, the cathedral behind it. This has been lifted in. And then these are the um, the walkways which we, uh, I suppose the walkway down along to Brook and Corbe, which is there. The interesting part about this is that um, the canal is not perpendicular to the bridge. So we, I suppose we wrestled with all of the geometry here, but I think we've got it right. I uh, have Jim to thank for this here. Uh, Jim came down to site quite a number of times to tease out how we'd finish this off. So we've, what we've done is we've conserved the line of the canal itself, made sure of that. And then we've emerged the, uh, the slope and the ramp from behind, in behind the, uh, the canal wall. So this is an in-situ concrete here to take the, the handrails. Uh, this is the flamed Kilkenny limestone patterned perpendicular to this here and then the other Kilkenny limestone is, is perpendicular to the spine beam and then down the other side then was similar and then it stitches in here with the uh, broken the Corbin pathway down along here so you'll see the you'll see it when you uh, when you when you visit it on site there's a lot of work put into that this is broken this is coming down to broken the Corbin again the grass here stitching into the existing um, and then it comes down, meanders down along here, and this this curve here uh, lines up with the, the curve downstream. Um, so I think we've done the right thing, and I think we've done it right. I think it sits nicely and uh, comfortably in its environment. So I think that's the end of the slideshow.